So you want to integrate your ring camera maybe or your Nest doorbell camera into HomeKit. Well, enter Hooves. Hooves is an easy, secure way to bring HomeKit support to those products that don't have native HomeKit support. I've done this with my SwitchBot, Twinkly Christmas lights, my Roomba vacuum, all those products that don't natively support HomeKit. And today I'll show you how to integrate a Nest doorbell camera and a Ring doorbell camera into HomeKit. Hoops 4 was recently released, so we'll also cover some of my favorite new features uh, that we got with this new update. Let's go. Yo, what's going on? Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit. So whether you're new to HomeKit or maybe you've been using it for quite a while, something like Hooves can really add a lot of extra functionality to your HomeKit setup. So the Hooves box is basically a plug and play hub that allows you to make your smart home accessories compatible with HomeKit. So I did my first video on Hoops a while back where I explained exactly what it is and the setup process. I'll put a link to that in the description below, but it's been a while since we talked about Hoops on the channel. Links to everything we talk about will be below and I'll also include chapters in case you want to skip around to any certain parts of this video. I also want to thank Hoops for sponsoring today's video and supporting this channel. So they say that the entire Hoops core has been rebuilt from the ground up on a new extensible architecture which allows for an easier deployment and modular independent upgrades of components. Woo. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, now when you install a new plugin, you have an option to spawn a new bridge or add it to an existing bridge. And I'll show you this a little bit, you know, more in a second when we install the Nest plugin, but running a single plugin per bridge basically ensures stability for all of your other accessories in case that new plugin misbehaves. Now, if this happens, it'll only affect that bridge and not the rest of your setup within Hoops. Now, your entire Hoops 4 system can be backed up and restored. Backups are encrypted faster and only a fraction of the size compared to Hoops 3. A redesigned plugin library allows you to browse available plugins by different criteria and categories. There are more certified plugins and plugin reviews from the community, which will help you select the best plugins. So there have also been some UI enhancements with Hoops 4. You can now add all camera feeds from the camera FFmpeg plugin and the Nest and Ring plugins directly to your dashboard. So this is one of those things that you can actually do with Hoops that you can't do with Homebridge. Each accessory is now an individual widget in the dashboard, plus there are additional systems widgets available. You can build out your own dashboard by dragging and dropping and resizing each widget real freely. Again, I really love this kind of customization. Uh, plus new templates and the ability to create your own theme with background and color customization options. So this background here is actually one of my own photos that I took when I was in South Beach, Miami, I believe. Hoops 4 provides code-free configuration for all plugins that offer it. This means easy configuration with no manual coding. That's huge for all of us like me that don't want to code, those that just want to keep it simple, and maybe just for you know those who are just getting started. Again, you'll see this more in a second when we install those plugins. Hoops now has a Mac app and a Windows app. So I'll be using the Mac app today, but essentially this means you could control some of your HomeKit accessories from a Windows computer if you wanted to. Interesting. So those are some of the big updates to Hoops 4. I'll put a link below to the What's New in Hoops 4 page on their website for a complete list of everything new and even more details. Now, let's get to the fun part, the plugins. For those that don't know, Hoops basically runs off of plugins produced by the developer community. So I'll put a link below to the plugin library page where anybody can go ahead and like search through all the available plugins. You don't have to buy it. You can go ahead and search and see what plugins are available. One plugin that I've got to admit is pretty amazing is the Nest Cam plugin. I know there are many people who have, you know, the Nest 
doorbell camera like this um, or maybe other Nest cameras and they want to switch over to HomeKit or something like that, this is a great option. If you do want to move over to HomeKit but maybe don't want to replace all of your Nest products. And let me just tell you that I've used a native HomeKit doorbell, camera doorbell for quite a while and this Nest plugin here gives me some features in HomeKit that I don't even get with a native HomeKit doorbell. Features I wish we had for HomeKit doorbells or cameras. For example, once you've added your Nest doorbell into Hoobs, you get a ton of sensors that also get gets exposed to HomeKit. Uh, you'll get a new sensor for each familiar face that you have set up through your Nest app. So what does that mean? Essentially, you can set up HomeKit automations around facial detection. That's something that we still can't even do with native HomeKit cameras. I set one that automatically unlocks my front door when my face is recognized or when my face is detected. These kinds of automations can be a little slow because of that facial recognition trigger does have to go like to Nest and then to Hoobs and then to HomeKit but still pretty awesome that you can do this kind of thing with this plugin. There's also sensors for when a package is detected or when a package is retrieved. You can create um, you know, a HomeKit automation that turns the lights blue or something when a package is detected. Again, stuff that we still can't do with native HomeKit cameras, unfortunately. A big one that we get with this plugin that I know many HomeKit users would love to see in all HomeKit cameras is a switch that allows you to turn on or off the video stream at any time manually or through automation. So you can create you know, a HomeKit automation that will turn on or off your stream based on you know, location, time of day, or you know, people detection, all kinds of stuff. Again, something we can't do with native HomeKit cameras. You can also configure the doorbell press as a HomeKit button to trigger any other scenes or automations within HomeKit. I guess my point is that this is a really awesome plugin that gives you a ton of possibilities for creative automations thanks to all these sensors that it includes. And it really couldn't be any easier to set up in Hoobs, so I'm going to go ahead and break out the Hoobs app on my Mac. So this is the new Hoobs app for the Mac. We're gonna to go to the plugin library section and search for the Nest Cam. There it is. And you can see we have the option to create a new bridge to install this plugin, or we can add it to an existing bridge. Again, I like creating a new bridge for each plugin, just in case I screw something up, it won't affect you know, my other plugins and my other accessories. So I'm gonna install this one on a new bridge. Now it's installed and you can see here our new Nest Cam bridge. Let's click on configuration and I'll show you just how easy this is. Just click link account. It says we'll need to log into Google and get a one-time access code. This will open a new dialogue. Just make sure your pop-up blocker doesn't prevent, you know, that window from opening. Click login. I'll choose my Google account. Click allow. And then we get our access code. Copy this. Let's go back to the Hoobs app. Paste in the access code. You can look here through some of the advanced settings if you want. Click save when you're done. Now if we go over to our accessories, boom, there it is, our Nest camera in hoops. How freaking easy was that? No coding, zero coding was required to get our Nest camera into hoops. We still got to get it into HomeKit, but first let's add this to our dashboard. I'll tap on the settings and click add to dashboard. Now our camera shows up in our Hoobs dashboard, so this is really awesome. And like I said, this is one of the things new to Hoobs 4. Now, I only have one camera in here, but if you have other cameras connected through Hoobs, you can basically add as many as you want right here in your dashboard, kind of create your own little custom interface dashboard, so I really like that. But let's go ahead and get this into HomeKit. So go to the Bridges tab and choose our Nest Cam Bridge. I'll scan the QR code with my home app on the iPhone. It'll tell me that this is an uncertified accessory, tap add anyways, 
and choose which room we want to place the bridge. It tells me that a programmable switch is connected to the bridge, which is our doorbell. I'll add that to my front porch also. Now, if I go into my front porch in the home app, we can see my Nest doorbell here works great. And I even get that two-way you know, audio communication through the home app. And that's it, just like that, my Nest doorbell camera is now visible within the home app and I have all those sensors and switches that I can automate you know, right there in the home app. It's kind of like an automation heaven for somebody like me, but it's just that easy and honestly, it's just as easy to configure the Ring doorbell if that's what you have instead. So Ring is actually one of the featured plugins, so I'll just tap on install and I will install it on a new bridge just like I did before for the Nest plugin. We'll let that install. Tap configuration. You might need to wait for a couple of seconds, but you should see that little uh, link account button pop up here. Tap that to link your Ring account. I'll put in my Ring username and password. Now because of two factor authentication, it'll text me a verification code. So I'll put in that code, scroll down, hit save. There's some more advanced options here again you can play with if you want, but now let's look at our accessories and boom, there you go. Now we have a Ring doorbell camera in Hoobs. I can add it to my Hoobs dashboard just like before. I can also now add it to HomeKit, so I'll go to my uh, my new ring bridge and I'll scan the QR code here with my home app again on my iPhone. Go through the prompts just like before. Now, boom, there you have it. My ring doorbell is in HomeKit with the included doorbell button and motion sensor, all of which can now be used and automated with HomeKit. Again, we did it all with hoobs and zero coding whatsoever. So, happy about that. Now, you can use, you know, hooves to not only integrate products like the Nest and Ring uh, doorbells and different cameras, but you can even extend the functionality of HomeKit. For example, you can expose IR blasters to HomeKit. You can create virtual switches and virtual locks, all kinds of stuff that, you know, you just can't do in HomeKit otherwise. The Hoops box, which is at the time of recording on sale for $199, uh, this thing makes it super easy to get started. Basically, it's just plug and play. And one really great thing about purchasing the Hoops box is that it comes with you know, free support anytime you run into any issues or need some assistance. They got really good support. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. And also, if you're a Hoobs user, uh, drop a comment. Let us know how you're using Hoobs and what are maybe some of your favorite plugins. Also, I'll put a link down there if you want to pick one of these up for yourself. That is an affiliate link and does help support the channel. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for new HomeKit videos every Sunday morning. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you later.